All right, Rich Van Tassel here with you. Today is Monday, January 18th, 2016. We're giving you the breakdown of the NFL Divisional Playoffs. We're starting first with the Kansas City Chiefs. They lost on the road to the New England Patriots. It was 27-20 to in favor of the Patriots. Uh, the Chiefs ending their 11-game winning streak that they had uh, extending into the playoffs. First, the box score for the Chiefs. Alex Smith, 29-50, 246 yards, one touchdown, no interception. Sir Kendrick West was the top rusher, 17 carries, 61 yards. He had a touchdown. Alex Smith rushed nine times for 44 yards. And Niles Davis, six uh, carries for 30 yards. It's 3.6, 4.9, and 5 yards per carry uh, collectively. Altogether, the team was 4.2 yards per rush. Jason Avant, the top wide receiver, 4 for 69. Albert Wilson, 5 for 57. He had a touchdown. Chris Conley, 5 for 33. Travis Kelsey, six catches for 23 yards, so he was held in check. Niles Davis lost a fumble. It was a big one. We'll get into that later. They didn't have any sacks, no interceptions. Niles Davis had three kick returns for 90 yards. That's 30 yards per return with a longest of 34, so very good and very consistent. Cairo Santos made both of his field goals. For the Patriots, Tom Brady, 28 of 42, 302 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Steven Jackson, the top rusher, 6 carries for 16 yards, 2.7 yards per rush. Julian Edelman had a rush of 11 yards. Tom Brady rushed 6 carries for 6 times, 1 touchdown. The team altogether was 14 of 38, 2.7 yards per rush. Julian Edelman, the top receiver, 10 catches for 100 yards. Rob Gronkowski, 7 catches for 83 yards and 2 touchdowns. And Keyshawn Martin, 2 for 57. Dante Hightower recovered a fumble. They only had 1 sack, no interceptions. And Steven Gostowski made both of his field goals. Now, I had picked the Chiefs to win. Um, a lot of missed opportunities for the Chiefs in this game. They had the Niall Davis fumble. That was a big one when they were driving. They twice got the ball inside the New England 45 and came away with zero points. They had the, they started a possession at the New England's 35 and ended up punting the ball. That's just unacceptable. It's going to beat you every time. And Marcus Peters, who I expected to get a pick, he missed the opportunity for an interception on Tom Brady when New England was driving and it led to points for the Patriots. So missed opportunities there. For the Patriots moving forward, they clearly have to run the ball better. Um, they only rush for 38 yards in this game on 14 carries. That's just not good enough. They were throwing the ball fine. Edelman back, uh, or excuse me, Edelman, who's been back, played very well. Danny Amendola, who came back, only had two catches for, eight and, for 18 yards, so he's got to be better. Rob Gronkowski is still the favorite target, so it's going to be interesting what New England does as they move forward. Can they find a way to run the ball because they're going to be playing Denver next week, who has a good secondary, but we'll get into that later in the week. All right, up next, in a wild game, the Arizona Cardinals defeat the Green Bay Packers 26-20. to The box score for the Packers, Aaron Rodgers was 24-44, 261 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Eddie Lacy was the top runner, 12 carries, 89 yards at 7.4 yards per rush. James Stark, 7 for 23, 3.3 yards per rush. Aaron Rodgers had two carries for 21 yards, which is 10.5 yards per rush. The team altogether, 22 of 135, 6.1 yards per rush. Jeff Janis, the top receiver, 7 receptions, 145 yards, 2 touchdowns. He had that Hail Mary at the end. Jared Everdaris, 4 for 55. Richard Rodgers, 5 for 45. No fumbles. The team had three sacks. Haha ha Clinton Dix and Demarius Randall both had interceptions. Jeff Janis, three uh, returns for 77 yards at 25.7 yards per return. Pretty good. Uh, 35 was his longest. Mason Crosby made both of his field goals. For the Cardinals, Carson Palmer, 25 of 41, 341 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. David Johnson, the top runner, 15 carries, 35 yards, 2.3 yards per rush. Altogether, the team was 19 of 40, which is 2.1 yards per rush. Larry Fitzgerald, monster game. Eight catches, 176 yards. It's 22 yards per catch, and the one touchdown in overtime. He was big in overtime. Had another big catch that got him down there. John Brown, 5 for 82. David Johnson, 6 for 43. Carson Palmer fumbled. It was not lost. The team only had one sack. Rashad Johnson had an interception. And Chandler Cantazero made both of his field goals. Now, we'll start with Arizona. They were the winning team. They were pretty sloppy in this game. Carson Palmer was not sharp early. There were questions about whether his finger could hold uh, was uh, giving him problems. That certainly could have been a possibility. He made a couple bad mental mistakes, though, in an in interception he threw in the end zone. He was just off balance and should never have thrown the ball in the first place. So he's lucky to get out of there with a win. We said he would have to be big. It was really Larry Fitzgerald who stepped up and carried this team for victory. Now the Green Bay Packers, I was thinking it when the game happened. 
the Green Bay Packers should have gone for two when they got that Hail Mary to tie the game up. Whenever that happens that late in the game, you've got to ride the luck and figure you don't belong there in the first place. You shouldn't have tied this game up or had the opportunity to tie the game up or get the touchdown there. you got to go for two to win the game, and it came back to bite them. Uh, All together, they lost Randall Cobb, so they were clearly diminished in the passing game. Guys like Aberderis and Jeff Janis were able to step up and play pretty well. Um, Aberderis got most of his yardage on that last uh, series where he caught the Hail Mary. He also caught a big fourth down pass. That was another reason, too, why they needed to go for two in that situation. They had like a fourth and 20 that they converted from inside their own end zone. Got to go for two in this situation. I'd really like to see some of these coaches finally step up and play for the win there, but it didn't happen. Arizona will move forward to play the Carolina Panthers. Who will we get into right now? They defeated the Seattle Seahawks 31-24. to uh, All 31 of the points came in the first half for the Panthers. All 24 came in the second half for the Seahawks. Russell Wilson was 31-48. of 48. This is for the Seahawks. 366 yards, 3 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. He was their top rusher. 3 carries for 32 yards, 10.7 yards per rush. Marshawn Lynch, 6 for 20. The team altogether, 12 carries, 78 yards, 6.5 yards per rush. They obviously had to throw the ball a lot and had to abandon the running game because they got down by 31 points. Jermaine Curse, 11 receptions, 110 yards, 2 touchdowns. Doug Baldwin, 8 for 82. Tyler Lockett, 3 for 75 and a touchdown. There were no fumbles. Team had one sack, no interceptions. Tyler Lockett, three returns for 92 yards, 30.7 yards per return. Uh, his longest of 50, skewed the numbers high just a bit. Stephen Hauschka was one for two in his field goals. For the Panthers, Cam Newton, 16 of 22, 161 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Jonathan Stort running the ball, 19 carries, 106 yards, 5.6 yards per rush, two touchdowns. Mike Tolbert, seven for 17. 2.4 yards per rush. The team all together, 41 of 144, 3.5 yards per rush, two touchdowns. Uh, that's what you expect with the Carolina Panthers. They'll run the ball even when they're not running at a high clip uh, on the yards per carry. Greg Olson, six catches, 77 yards, one touchdown. Ed Dixon, two for 22. Corey Brown, two for 22. Tiggin Jr. fumbled. Cameron Artis Payne fumbled, but neither one of them lost the fumbles. They had five sacks. Luke Keekley and Cortland Finnegan both had interceptions. Luke Keekley returned his one for a touchdown. Graham Cano made his only field goal. Now, for the Seahawks, they were just clearly way too sloppy in the first half. They couldn't stop Carolina at all. Russell Wilson threw two big interceptions, one of them that was returned for a touchdown, and it just spiraled out of control. Um, Carolina did not score any points in the second half. Seattle was able to get themselves back into the game. Don't know if Carolina really let up. Uh... They like to run the ball. That's what they started doing, and they were clearly going to do more of it in the second half. I think Seattle knew that, and that's what they were able to shut it down. And Carolina's defense, they relied on that to win the game. So I'm not going to be too critical of Carolina letting Seattle back into this game. Um, It came down to an onside kick. It's not like the seven points. Seattle had a chance to tie um, with a late driving touchdown. So you don't like to see it, but I figured they would have managed it a bit different had Seattle really pressured them more. It was a 10-point lead until under the two-minute warning. So uh, that's what Carolina was able to do, and they won the game. Seattle, clearly, you got to come back and come out with more sense of urgency than they had in their defense. Just could not stop anyone in that game. So it'll be Carolina against Arizona. That should be an interesting game, a good offense and a good defense. First, a very good defensive team in Carolina and a team that likes to run the ball in Carolina as well. So we'll see how that translates for the NFC Championship game. And then final game, the Pittsburgh Steelers lost to the Denver Broncos, 23-16. Ben Roethlisberger for the Steelers, 23 of 30, 24 of 37, 339 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Martavius Bryant was the top rusher, 2 for 40. Fitzgerald Toussaint, 12 carries for 39 yards, 3.3 yards per rush. Altogether, the team was 19 of 85, 4.5 yards per rush and a touchdown, but your leading rusher was Martavius Bryan, who's a wide receiver. He was also the top receiver, 9 receptions, 154 yards. Darius Hayward Bay, 2 receptions, 64 yards. Semi Coates, 2 for 61. Fitzgerald Toussaint uh, fumbled and was lost. That was a big fumble in the game. We'll get into that later. Marcus Wheaton fumbled and was not lost. The team had only one sack, no interceptions. Chris Boswell made all three of his field goals. For the Broncos, Peyton Manning, 21 of 37, 222 yards. No touchdowns, most importantly, no interceptions. C.J. Anderson, the top rusher, 15 carries, 72 yards, 4.8 yards per rush. One touchdown, Ronnie Hillman, 16 carries, 38 yards. 
2.4 yards per rush. The team was 33 carries, 109 yards, one touchdown, 3.3 yards per rush. Emmanuel Sanders is the top wide receiver, 5 for 85. Demarius Thomas, 4 for 40. Benny Fowler, 2 for 35. Peyton Manning fumbled. He did not lose it. DeMarcus Ware recovered the fumble. Team had three sacks, no interceptions. Omar Bolden had a 42-yard punt return. Did not get a touchdown. And Brandon McManus was 5 for 5 in his field goals. Now, uh, clearly, really the only thing to talk about in this game was the Fitzgerald Toussaint fumble. It turned the game around. Pittsburgh was driving the score. They were up 13-12 to 12 at that point. They would have uh, likely had a chance to put the game away with a touchdown. Certainly, um, a field goal or any score of that kind would have made it a touchdown needed for the Denver Broncos to win the game. But the touchdown allowed Denver to come back down the field and score. They then added a field goal late after Pittsburgh went for it on four downs. So, tough loss for the Steelers. They played well without Antonio Brown. They were really shutting Peyton Manning down. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Peyton Manning plays next week. He was efficient in this game, but certainly not the game breaker. You may need to beat the New England Patriots, but uh, hats off to the Broncos for finding a way to win this game and really got a sting for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But, you know, they got some breaks last week. They got the break with the Jets losing and getting in the playoffs, so I guess it may have just caught up with them in this game. All right, so that is the divisional playoff breakdown. Be sure to stay tuned the rest of the week. We will have our weekly NBA report as we always do tomorrow, Tuesday the 19th. And we will go over the uh, NFC and AFC championship games this Friday on the radio as well. And any flash news alerts, we will keep those coming for you. So thank you all so much.